So then they found out that you know there, there's a lot of things that um, are required in virtual production that pretty much w weren't there, and, and especially uh, yeah, it, it, it either even in the current market there's a lot of things that are like uh, long setup or you know you need a whole team to, to, to assemble, and so then. Basically, the Mars team challenged themselves to create this product. It would it would be simple to use, easy to set up, and then it would be portable, uh, be accessible. So then it would be affordable, so everybody can get their hand on that want to try out uh, virtual production. So then this is what they came up with. You can zoom in there. Uh, this, is, this is the Mars uh, hub. And then right. so right here you can see you're familiar obviously with the tracker, mm -hmm. and then you know the base station. It's not the same. Uh, VR tech, but then uh, the rover here is basically um, giving it power, but also this whole thing is um, is IP based. So then here, you, as you can see, Ethernet is basically um, they're sending the tracking data to the the Mars hub, and just like you were saying, you know, Bluetooth giving like yeah absolute pain. Basically, everybody was begging us to hardwire it. Yep, yep. And then this, it's is plugged in straight to the computers. Everything is yeah. wired. So, so, so then there, there, there's an Ethernet cable that goes straight into the uh, Ethernet that goes straight into the uh, the computer. So as you can see, it's really plug and play because yep. Steam VR is in here. So it's, you know, now you're offloading all that uh, oh. computing. Off of so say, say it again. Steam VR is in there. Steam VR is in here. It's customized. So we strip away from you know HMD connection you know, room calibration, all these things that you don't need for um, camera tracking. Took it all away, and you don't need to update the MDR. Just kind of walk you through the features. So yep. if you come toward me, to, uh, so as I'm sure you have observed, right, we have a, a, a Genlock signal uh, and a time code signal here. And uh, this is the Genlock cable uh, that is coming from our Gen 10, and then we uh, we don't have a, a time code generator, but right. but you could plug it in here and it will sync up the time code, right? So um, yeah, so that's that's like a, one major missing link of our tracking system. We don't have the time data. We don't have uh, time not available, right? We we can't gen lock it. So now it's available, right? So um, yeah, we we got that to work. And then uh, so how does it work in 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 your Unreal? So when you open a project, right, you, you will want to, you know, you get the live link, right? So here's a, if you do an ad source and click uh, select message bus source, you'll see the ID for Mars, the source machine. And after you click on that, right, you'll see the three rover signals that's coming in from the Mars system. So basically, you don't, there's nothing you need to do on your PC unit. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, and then... So the, you don't have to run SteamVR at all? You no, don't no, have to no, have installed? No, nothing, nothing, yeah. Oh, so, that, yeah, that was, a, that was <laughs> a major pain thing because SteamVR took up a lot of CPU. Yeah. Right, so it's gonna, like, it's gonna rob your frame rate for in your en Unreal Engine. So, yeah, so that, that, that was something that we wanted to do for the community. And so let me show you how, uh, how, how it works. So right now we have, in our scene, there's a virtual camera, mm -hmm. and we already assigned a, a rover, this rover, to the scene, right? So if you can look at the composite view in, a, in, the, in the, on the TV, right? You'll see that it's actually aligned, right? So, you want me to take Yeah, it's okay, I'll just move it around. Yeah, yeah so it's, and if I set the camera down, see it's, it's very stable, it's not jittering, right? And that's, uh, that's due to this uh, very uh, stable connection, and also, uh, we also, you know, improve the tracking, right, with some additional layers. So um, it'll meet more production needs, right? Okay, so let me show you how it works with the camera. On the camera, we also, uh, you can connect the lens encoder to the rover. So so you could uh, pull focus, right? To align the focus so of, your, of your camera lens to, to the virtual camera. So you can see in the scene by, by if I change the focus here, right, that's gonna align in the yeah in, in my map. Yeah. So there are three ports on the the rover that so you could you literally uh, you could assign uh, install three up to three three uh, lensing folders mm. on these fifteen millimeter fifteen millimeter bars.
Okay. So, so not, for just to, for Zoom, Focus and Iris. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they have its own respective ports on the, for the USB. Right, so now it's on the Focus Focus port. Got it. So that so. This is this is the that, focus, port. The focus port. Yeah, and and that's the iris, and this is the each the port bottom. I've been allocated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, Got it. that one is the what is it? Focal length. The yeah. zoom. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So now when we're ready to shoot, right? So what was the the first challenge when people start like aligning the their stage with the yeah. virtual scene? You remember this when 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 you would align, you would just like kind of eyeball. Like, <laughs> uh, I think I'm here now. No, yes. No, let me, uh, I do remember that. Right, right. No, 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 no. And then so, you know, that's kind of archaic and a little bit uh, sad. Oh, actually, I lined it though pretty well. But, you know, you, you're, ne you're never that lucky when, when yeah. you're on a set in, in the rush. So, Johnny will teach, show you something cool that has, uh, if you have multi uh, yeah, so, track, tracker. So, besides just ca tracking the camera, you can also use it to align your scenes. Because you put it on the, a chair of a, a, a surface for your actor to actor to uh, interact with and just align it to the virtual scene of where the chair is. I think it's about here. About here. Uh, so where's about right? Yeah, they're about right. That's about right. Okay, so I put it down. The eyeball. If I sit down and when Tim moved the camera, my yeah, butt is not gonna move around. I'm 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 here in this space. Yeah. Right, so this so oh, that's sorry, gonna that my bad. make the scene believable, like right? merging the real and virtual scene, right? Okay, so that's one one application of it. Another way that you can play around with it is, here, uh, yeah, I, you hold it. So what we did here, let me just explain first. I rigged the uh, virtual light in the scene. So mm -hmm. if you look at the comp uh, composite view, you'll see a light that's moving. Yeah. Right? Okay. Let me get back here. So you can see both. Do, do it again. Do it again. Okay, so now if I turn on the slide here, that's supposed to mimic the, the same the same direction of the virtual light. Let me turn it on first. No, so that's not on. So now Tim, can you hold it? Just kind of swing it around. I'll, I'll give you a better angle. Can you know angle? Yeah, like maybe something here. Shine your light so that it goes on to the, the side of the train. Yeah, so. <laughs> so yeah, lighting lighting the actors in the port, right? And it, it it sucks. Like one of the things that makes the scene unbelievable, I mean, is that the virtual light source is different from the actor's light source. So yeah, you, yeah, you could align it this way. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's um, that's some of the things you could do with with Rover, and you know, we're, we're excited to see what people do with it. How and, many how many trackers can you have? You could uh, you could attach up to three rovers. Okay. Each you rover. Up to three rover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So three trackers. Three trackers. And four how many four. base stations? Uh, what do you, uh, uh, well, is there any? We can support up to uh, four base stations. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So later on, I'll tell you what in the box. But yeah, it okay. would be two, and then it could support up to four. Got it. Stations. Got it. If you had four, you could use them. Yeah. Got yes. It. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I'm, I'm rotating the, the anchor. Press that. Press this. Boop. Boop. Just reorient your world based on where yeah. you put the tracker. Yeah, and whatever like garbage mag from a, like, you know, that orient same orientation you have built already, you don't need to change. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure if you have done any kind of uh, virtual production, you you notice um, we, we have the lens file aligned to the virtual camera. So, HCC uh, also provide the tool to help you do that, so you don't have to uh, sift through the online documentations, right? So if you, if you turn around and look this way, it comes with a calibration board that uh, is part of the set, mm -hmm. and on the bottom here, there's an interface to mount your rover. Well, what what it does is uh, is you can fix the rover exactly with the relative position to the checkerboard. So um, we know the exact position of that relative to your to your camera. So it, it replaces that pipe <coughs> that messy pipeline of like getting putting the tracker around the checkerboard and having another person by the PC trying to like click the on these LEDs, right? And so that take two people, it take you from like 15 to 30 minutes to set that up. With this, you can get it done in about five minutes. And yeah. it's taking away that like the human error. Oh, let me error. play the video for you. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. taking away the human error that can that can, that can come with all this like yeah. lens cal calibration and offset. So, so the, the UI kind of looks like this. Mm -hmm. And they will like 
do have to use hitboxes that comes up and auto generates the next one when you get a good capture. So you're not like always going back and forth. Yeah. Um, Does it remember what lenses you have? Uh, right, so uh, it, it, after the calibration, it will output a file mm -hmm. of okay. um, all the like the rotation values, the transform values, and the distortion values, and then you will have to assign that to the lens file in Unreal. Like they have to, Got it. Unreal have yeah. their own um, lens calibration. So then essentially it would be there. Yeah, it's, so you wouldn't yeah. have to do it more than once. Mm -hmm. if, same camera, same lens. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. Um, and the file is just like a, um, not a Python, the, but like the, the a text file. The file, the text file yeah. that you have to manually type in. Yeah. Or cool. copy and paste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. Just, but, and the, that's a, a standalone app? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes. It's a Windows app? Or? Yes, it's okay. a Windows app. Cool. So, you're probably wondering the most important thing is the price, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to jump on it. <laughs> so, the, the Mars contract is uh, good for the total package is $5,000. Um, and that includes the the Mars Hub and two base stations, uh, sorry, th three rovers, three rovers, two base stations, and two trackers, and then also the calibration uh, kit. And you have a uh, a dedicated limited amount, but we want to you know get it out to our to the community. So on May twenty fifth, we have a early bird program. So if you go to Mars.vive.com, you can sign up to register.